Now let's look at the properties of the CDF. As, as now we have defined the CDF, we can look at the properties and uh, we will start with uh, the limits at either infinity, negative infinity and positive infinity. And by definition, you see the limit of the CDF as X goes to negative infinity is by definition equal to the limit as X goes to minus infinity of probability that random variable X is less than or equal to X. And as you pull this towards negative infinity, there will not be any outcomes or any values that random variable X can take. And therefore this probability should go to zero. Okay, therefore, therefore the left limit of the CDF of any CDF function should be zero. And this is evident in, in this example, you see below one, it's always zero. So it starts from zero at negative infinity, stays at zero up until the first value it can take. What about the other extreme as X goes to positive infinity? Again, this is equal to the limit of the probability of the event X less than or equal to small x, where this goes to positive infinity, in which case at the limit, you will cover all values that random variable X can take. So everything will be included, which means the sum should be equal to one. Again, you can see this from this example, uh, beyond seven, the CDF value stays at one. So at the limit at positive infinity, it, it will have the value one as expected. So any CDF value is limited from below um, zero and limited by one for, um, uh, and therefore the CDF function uh, is always between zero and one. So it cannot fall below zero and it cannot exceed one. And this is natural because by definition, it is itself a probability, but at the extremes at negative infinity, it should be zero and at positive infinity, it should be one. Okay, next property, the CDF is monotonically non-decreasing, okay? And mathematically speaking, this means if real numbers A and B and A is smaller than B, this means the CDF value at A should be less than or equal to CDF value at B. Now look here, A is strictly less than B, Okay, we are uh, assuming A and B are different values. In this case, if A is less than B, the CDF value at A can be smaller than the CDF value at B, or it can be equal, but it cannot be greater. Okay, so this is why we call it not increasing, but non-decreasing. It does not decrease. It can stay constant but it cannot decrease because this is cumulative. You are adding probabilities as you go towards positive infinity. So since any, uh, any probability is non-negative, when you add it, you will have um, an increase in your CDF function. And we can see this again in this example, you see this plot, the red plot, the CDF function is non-decreasing. At times it stays constant, but whenever it changes, it changes upwards, it increases, it never decreases. Okay, and next property, it is right continuous. Again, this is evident from the example you see at this point, the CDF is not continuous, but it is right continuous. Okay, so the limit of the CDF at one doesn't exist, but the right limit exists because you see the jump here is equal to the probability of the random variable taking this exact value. So you see the jump and the jump is reflected at the CDF value 
at this point. So it's not continuous, but it is always right continuous. So you can find any right limit. And the mathematical definition is here. And if you approach the, the CDF function at any point from right, it will be equal to um, the function value at that point. And sometimes we, um, we denote this right limit as this notation with A plus. Okay, so this notation is going to mean the limit of the CDF at A from right. Okay, so next property for um, two real numbers A and B where A is less than B, um, you can write this interval from minus infinity up to B. Okay, let's show this on the real line. So A is less than B, meaning A is here and therefore B must be somewhere here on the real line. Okay, so this interval here is from minus infinity up to B, including B, okay? And now I can write this as the union of two disjoint sets or events, this interval and this interval. So this is this event here or this interval. And this one is excluding A. So this is an open interval from left, but it includes B. So you see these two um, intervals are disjoint. So they form a partition of this interval. Okay, so their union gives this interval. And by Kolmogorov's third axiom, I can write the probability of um, this interval, this one. Okay, so the probability that um, X is smaller than or equal to B is equal to, by Kolmogorov's third axiom, the sum of the probabilities of these two intervals because they are disjoint and they, when united, give you the first interval. So this is equal to probability that X is less than or equal to A plus probability that X is in this interval. Okay, so what does this mean? A sorry, x is in, in this interval, means a is less than x because you see this is an open interval from left, so a is excluded. So I have a strict inequality here, but less than or equal to b because this side is closed. And when you put this on the left-hand side, what you get is the probability of this event a less than x less than or equal to b is equal to this minus this. But what are these? By definition, this is the CDF of x at b, and this one is the CDF of x at a. Okay, so this relationship is very important and it's very widely used for any random variable x, the probability that it's between a exclusive and b inclusive, where a is less than b, is equal to the CDF of x at b minus the CDF of x at a. But you should always be careful about this inequality. This one is strict inequality, and this one is inequality with equality. So. A is excluded and B is included. If the inequalities are different, then this result will not hold. And finally, the probability of X equals A, and this is important for especially discrete random variables. We can write this in terms of the CDF as this, the CDF value at A, minus the left limit of the CDF at A. And this is the meaning of this, the left limit. So similar to this, I will write this as the limit as X goes to A from left 
the CDF at X. So to put it in perspective, um, so for instance, this here, if you want to compute the, the probability of X being equal to two, okay, you should write this as the CDF value at two minus the left limit at two. Okay, so CDF value at two is, you see, so it should be this year. The CDF value is three over eight. Okay, that is the CDF value at two. And the left limit is, you see, when you approach to two from left, the limit is two over eight. Therefore, the probability you find is one over eight. So this is another way of putting um, the probability values at each point is equal to the amount of the jump in the CDF at that point. Okay, so let me repeat that. This here is a mathematical expression that tells us that if you want to find the, the probability of random variable X being equal to A, some real number A, what you do is you look at the CDF function at A and see whether there is a jump. If there is no jump, the probability of X being equal to A is zero. For instance, in this example, if you look at five, the CDF value does not have a jump. It's six over eight. It's equal to the left limit. It's equal to right limit. It's equal to the CDF value at five, no jump. Therefore, the probability that X equals five is zero. Why? Because the CDF value at five minus the left limit at five is zero. They are the same value. Therefore, since there is no increment in the CDF, we say that the, the probability that X takes this value five is zero. On the other hand, if you look at here at four, Okay, the probability of X being equal to four is the CDF value at four, which is six over eight minus the left limit, which is uh, three over eight. And the difference is also three over eight, which means the probability of X being equal to four is also equal to three over eight.